bevo.com. Ken, obviously you're not just an author, you're, you're running a, a very powerful uh, global business that can launch our company. So how do you find uh, that you can most help organizations in leadership capacity? Well, I think the big thing that we try to get them to understand that effective leadership is really a transformational journey, beginning with self-leadership. It's very right. interesting is that uh, one of the most popular interventions we do is we have a self-leadership program, situational self-leadership. Because a lot of people don't ever take a look at themselves. Mm -hmm. And uh, how do they take initiative, you know? How do they get what they need to have to, to be successful? Because if they can get a sense on what they need to do to be successful and what they do, then they're going to even get a better sense when they go to the next step, which is one-on-one -on -one leadership. See, because self-leadership, you're gaining perspective on your own leadership point of view, a little bit about your, your disposition and personality. You know, a sense of what your mission might be, your values, and all. We try to really help people, uh, you know, really get to know about themselves and, and what are their points of power and uh, how can they, you know, kind of collaborate for success and all. Yeah. And then once they understand themselves, then we feel they're ready to, for a one-on-one -on -one relationship where the big goal is building trust with somebody yeah. uh, else. And, and so... Uh, but that's one form of leadership where you have, you know, eight to ten reports, and and uh, you might meet with them as a group once in a while. But basically, you're managing people one on, on one. Sales mm -hmm. managers do that, and yeah. and uh, people in those positions. The third stop, which we do a lot of work on, is how do you build an effective team? Because teams are more complicated than one on one leadership, uh, and. Uh, you know, because if it's just you and I working together, we only have two possible relationships, yours to me, me and mine to you. But if if somebody else joins us, now we go from two relationships to 12 because it's not only our relationship to the three of us, but it's my relationship to you when this other person is there and your relationship to me when they're mm -hmm. there. Because, you know, you can meet with a colleague before you go in to see your boss and agree on what you're going to talk to your boss about. In the middle of the meeting, that colleague could go south. Yeah. And, uh, and then finally, the final journey is organizational leadership, which is now that's even more complicated than building a community uh, that you're trying to do with a team because now you're trying to organizational effectiveness in terms of performance and all. And the, the theory that runs throughout those is situational leadership, which basically says there's no one best leadership style. It depends on, on the development level of the individual you're working with. It depends on the stage of group development for the team you're working with. It really depends on what it, where they are in terms of their concerns and all around change and all. And so we can really help companies design a whole curriculum and so often you'll have a problem in an organization and they try to solve it at the organizational level, but the real problem is the leader has never really dealt with who they are and what their ego problems are and all those kinds of things. So you can't solve that at the organizational level. That should have been done ahead of time. And so we even have a couple of graduate programs that were, were a key on where we move people through that whole movement from self to one-on-one -on -one to teams to organization. And, so I think that's one of the really powerful things that we've been able to do with companies here in UK and all is to give them a perspective on the journey to be an effective leadership and it's it's something that that you don't just sort of jump in to. Yeah. See, it's interesting. So it starts again with with self and and one of the uh, one of I was listening to the to the CD and you said that you should start you should even write your own obituary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What was the point you were making with that? Well, you know, there's three, I think everybody should have a compelling vision, you know, which uh, I wrote a book called Full Steam Ahead with Jesse yeah. Stoner on visioning for companies. But most people don't have a vision, which is what, what, what's your purpose, you know, why are you here, yeah. you know? And then second is what's your picture of the future? If you do a good job on your purpose, what will happen? And I, I got interested in obituaries when I read the old story about Alfred Nobel, you know, the Nobel Peace Prize. and all that uh, part of the beginning of the last century, uh, his brother died in Stockholm. And uh, uh, when he went to the newspaper to read the obituary on his brother, they had he and his brother mixed up. And Alfred Nobel had been involved in the invention of dynamite. 
And uh, so what was the whole obituary? It was about destruction and all that. And he was devastated that that's how he was going to be remembered. So he called friends and loved ones around and said, what's the opposite of destruction? They said, peace. And so he redesigned his life so he'd be remembered for peace, not for uh, destruction. <clears throat> so, uh, so I've written my own obituary. Every morning I read my mission statement, I look at my obituary, and then I have a set of operating values which uh, should guide my behavior. And, and organizations need the same. What business are you in? What are you, what are you heading for and all? And then once you have a compelling vision, then you can put goals in there. But most organizations you know, never communicate well where they're heading and what they're trying to accomplish and what's going to guide their journey.